We talked about quadratic expressions before. Now we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations. This is Lesson 21C, and of course I've got those videos linked in this description. Quadratic equations usually have two different solutions. The variable have two separate values that will make the equation true. We want the equation to be in this form. There might even be an a here, and that represents a coefficient for each of the variables. These are the a, the b, and the c would actually be numbers. I'll show you. But we want it to be in this form where it's equal to zero. If we see it like this, where it equals a number, we can add a negative 15 to each side of this equal sign to set the equation to equal zero. We've done this before, where we've added a negative number and We've created zero pairs. Well, now we could just add that negative number and tack it onto the back here. See? We get x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals zero. Now we can factor this and find two possible values for x. So the quadratic form of an equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That's the standard form, and a quadratic expression an equation have a variable raised to the second power and the terms have the same variable. They both have an x in them. One of them is an x squared. So this is the standard form of a quadratic equation. In fact, it should say equals zero, shouldn't it? An expression would just be like this without the equal sign. So these are equations because they have an equal sign and a zero, all right? So here we've got a quadratic equation, x squared plus 2x equals 15, and we're going to add a negative 15 to each side of the equation to put it in its standard form, and now we can factor this. And we factor it by making a list of all the possible factors for negative 15 that when added together will give us a 2. So what two numbers can be multiplied together to get a negative 15, but when we add them, we get a 2. We make a list of all the possible factors for negative 15, but these won't equal 2 when we add them together. This negative 3 and this 5 will. Negative 3 plus 5 pushes us into the positive, to a positive 2. So we've got a negative 3 and a 5. We write two sets of parentheses because it starts with an x squared. We put an x in the front of this one and an x in the front of this one, and we put in our negative 3 here and our positive 5 there. Now what we have to do is a thing called the principle of zero products. We set each parentheses factor to equal 0, and we solve for x. So if we have a minus 3 here, we're going to add a positive 3 to each side of the equal sign so that we can isolate x as a 3. For the plus 5, we're going to subtract 5, or you could say add a negative 5 to each side of the equal sign, so we isolate x as a negative 5. Now we can substitute each value for x into the equation to check if they're true. So let's plug in 3 for x to see if it works. We get 3 squared, which is 9, plus 2 times 3, which is 6, equals 15. Yeah, that's true. How about the negative 5? Negative 5 times negative 5, that's negative 5 squared is a positive 25 because a negative times a negative makes a positive and 2 times negative 5 makes a negative 10 yeah that equals 15 so these are solutions 3 and negative 5 are solutions for that quadratic equation see we had more than one solution for x we had a 3 and a negative 5 now when we're presented with multiple choice answers we can guess and check by substituting answers into the the answer choices into the equation. So we can just do it quickly because we're just trying to answer the multiple choice test. I'd rather you did the factoring and solving it, but you can save time just by looking at the possible answers and substituting them in. All right? So we know that these are the possible factors. So they're asking us to do this part, all right? Not solving for x. They just want to know the factors for the expression, okay? So we set the equation to standard form and find the factors. So it looked like this. It said equal to negative 36. So we added 36 to each side of the equal sign, set it to equal 0. Now we find two numbers that equal a positive 36, but when added together make a negative 12. And out of all the answers... The ones that can be multiplied together to get a positive 36 would be a negative 6 and a negative 6. 
and when you add them together, you get a negative 12. So we know our factors in our two parentheses are going to be, because of the x squared, we have an x and an x. We have x minus 6 and x minus 6. So the correct answer is number 4. See? So you can do this actually pretty quickly because you're just looking for the factors. You're not trying to solve for x like we did here when we set it to equal 0 and did all that. We're just looking for the factors. We're just looking for this part. So, what two numbers equal negative 36 that when added together make a negative 12? Whichever they are, that would be the ones, okay? Now, your other choice is to find the correct answer here is FOIL every single possible answer to find the one that looks like this, x squared minus 12x plus 36 when it's in standard form. So, you would have to FOIL every single possible answer and say, nope, it wasn't 1. FOIL it, nope, it wasn't 2. This gave us a positive 12 instead of negative 12. This gave us a 0 pair. That wasn't it. So using FOIL may take longer. It'll still work, but it may take longer. So if you're really lost and confused, go ahead and FOIL it. All right? But know in your heart that you can just find two numbers. Once it's set to equal 0, you can find two numbers that equal this when multiplied together that equal this when added. Okay, And the actual value of x will be the inverse of the number in the factor. So if it says x minus 6 is a factor, then x is actually a positive 6. Because when we set them to equal 0, it said x minus 3, so x equals 3. See, it went from a, the inverse. And we had a plus 5, so x is equal to negative 5. So remember, when you see the factor that you know x is actually a positive 6. See that? We can try putting a positive 6 in place of the x. And we get 36. Negative 12 times 6 is a negative 72. We add 36 again. And yeah, this does equal 0. This gets us to negative 36 plus 36 is 0. See? So either way, if you have to FOIL it, that's fine. But all you have to do is find two numbers that equal this one multiplied that equal this one added. Okay? Now, that was them just wanting the factors. In this one, it says, in the equation x squared minus 7x equals 18, what are the possible values for x? They don't want the factors. They want the actual possible values for x. Which numbers can take the place of x in this equation and make the equation true? Now, we can actually substitute these numbers into every single problem. We substitute in the 3. We see that it doesn't work, so we don't even bother with the negative 6. So if it's not the 3, it can't be number 1, because it has to be both of them in that answer. We try positive 6. It doesn't work, so number 2 is not the answer, because it's got to be both of them. We try 3, and it's not that one either, so it's not a positive 2. We try 4, and bingo, yes, we get it. And we try the second number in 4, and yes, it works. So that could take you quite a while to substitute them all in. It might actually be quicker for you to just write the equation in standard form by adding a negative 18 to both sides of the equation, setting it to equal 0, and then finding two numbers that equal negative 18 when multiplied together that equal negative 7 when added. We come up with a positive 2 and a negative 9. That'll make a negative 18. And when you add a positive 2 and a negative 9, you get a negative 7. So we have a positive 2 and a negative 9. But be careful, because that's not the answer. That's just the factors. It wants the actual values for x, not the factors. Okay? Remember, we use the inverse of the factors for that value of x. So you can look at this and say, oh, it's a negative 2 and a positive 9. See? So we would know number 4 here is the correct one, because that's the negative 2 and positive 9. Don't forget that you still need to use the inverse of whatever the numbers are that you use for the factors, okay? Be very careful. So quadratic functions can be written like this. They'll be, they won't be set to equal 0. That's an equation. A quadratic function is going to equal a y, or it'll equal f of x. And this f of x, that's how you read it, means the function of x. We talked a little bit about functions before. It's actually the y value, okay? And in standard form, it equals a 0. 
It's got a variable squared plus the same variable that's not squared. See that? That's a quadratic form of an equation. In, it's in standard form. So be careful to read the questions. Does it want the factors, those two sets of parentheses, or does it want the values of x? Because if it wants the values of x, it's going to be the inverse of those factors, isn't it? Just be very careful. So you should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 247. If you have any problems, you can watch this video again. All right? And I'm going to actually include a few videos about quadratic equations into this GED playlist. So the very next video is going to be an Algebra 1 quadratic equation video. Watch it. It might be very informative, and it goes a little bit more in depth about this if you want to know more about it. Or, if you really feel like you understand this, you can skip those videos and go right to 21D, where we're going to be talking about solving and actually graphing inequalities on a grid. All right? Don't forget to watch my Algebra Word Problems playlist. There's so many word problems in this test. There's going to be, the next video is going to be principle of zero products, and then these quadratic equation videos. And I'm going to have these links to help you. Skip these if you feel like you've got it, or watch these if you want some extra help. Okay? So, keep going. Backtrack and, you know, retreat and regroup if you're ever stuck, but just don't quit. And we'll keep taking this one step at a time. And I believe in you. I really think you can do this. All right? We'll make it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.